While everyone on the internet is rallying behind high-res streaming, why am I still buying CDs? What's the draw? Well, in this video, I'm going to address a few fresh topics on why I'm still buying CDs and why you should too. Let's get to it. You know, for the past few years, I found myself engulfed in the world of CDs. I've been creating tons of videos about CDs, CD players, and the whole culture that surrounds them. There is a certain charm to the compact disc, a kind of magic that's hard to explain, but I get it. My peculiar passions aren't exactly why you're here listening to me. You're probably wondering, why, why is this guy so bent on championing physical media, especially at a time when it seems like the whole concept of physical media is on its last legs. I thought they were extinct. Extinct. Uh. It's no secret that the era of big box stores carrying CDs has faded into the background. And now it feels like we're standing on the edge, watching as our beloved movies and video games teeter on the brink of becoming relics of the past. This conversation has been echoing across the internet, stirring a sense of alarm. It's a chilling thought, isn't it? Wondering how long it will be before the brick and mortar mom and pops like game shops and record stores just disappear from our streets. I'm with you. It's not a future I'm eager to embrace, but by seeing how the trends are unveiling themselves, it's good to prepare for the absolute worst. Remember back in 2021, when I started to share my thoughts on CDs, I believed, perhaps naively, that if enough of us showed our support, we might witness a revival of sorts. Now, here we are in 2024, and my message is shifting. I'm urging you, more passionately than ever, to grab as many CDs as you can right now. Let's cherish and preserve the tangible experience of shopping in person while it's still within our grasp. I've always had a love affair with facts and figures. I guess you could say I'm a bit of a numbers guy. When you look at the stats, CDs seem to be holding their own quite well. In 2023, there were 36.83 million CD albums sold, marking a modest increase of 2.7% from the previous year. Over the last few years, CDs have charted a respectable course with a notable high in 2021 when sales soared 46.7 million units. That was a bright spot indeed. Sure, it's a far cry from the craziness of 942 million back in 2000, but it's a step in the right direction. However, I'm realistic enough to acknowledge that CDs may never reclaim their glory days of the turn of the century. The landscape has changed. People are inundated with choices options, with many opting to stream their content. This shift towards digital is shaping a new generation to value convenience over the tangible quality and the ritual of music consumption. Yet, there's a fascinating trend where a significant number of young folks are snapping up vinyl records, though one wonders how many have the turntables or stereo systems to fully appreciate their collections. It's my hope that this channel can offer some guidance to those navigating these waters. There are two phenomena I've been less enthusiastic about, vinyl records and Taylor Swift. Interestingly enough, these two have played pivotal roles in sustaining global physical media sales over the last few years. Without the two, I would confidently say that the CD would have much have a much tougher time regaining any momentum. You see, the subtle uptick we've observed over the years has its own quiet significance. It's sufficient, at the very least, to justify maintaining an online inventory through platforms like Amazon, eBay, and other digital marketplaces. Yet the question lingers, is this modest growth enough to sustain inventory in big box retailers and keep the doors open for our cherished mom and pop shops? It's hard to say for sure. This uncertainty is precisely why I'm urging you, yes, each of you, to throw your support behind local music stores. I get it. Amazon is the epitome of convenience and often easier on the wallet, but consider what we stand to lose. The unique experience of flipping through records, the tactile joy of discovering new music in a physical store is irreplaceable. Once it fades into the realm of nostalgia, we'll find ourselves missing more than just the novelty. We'll long for the sense of community and discovery that came with it. Oh, I love today's music. My passion for music knows no bounds. It eclipses any particular format or medium. To me, it doesn't matter how I encounter music. I embrace streaming services like Spotify for the sheer breadth of discovery they offer. It's an indispensable tool in the quest to explore the vast expanse of music out there, both old and new. 
Imagine having at your fingertips a library of over 100 million music tracks, 5 million podcasts, and 350,000 audiobooks. It's a gateway to uncovering a wealth of artists, some of whom might have otherwise slipped through the cracks of our collective consciousness. It's a poignant thought, though, isn't it? To consider that a band from the 2000s might have crafted the next chart-topping album only to vanish into obscurity be because the means to discover them were not as evolved as they are today. The bias of radio stations, often swayed by payola and other factors, has historically limited exposure for many deserving artists. However, when radio stations do shine the spotlight on local and indie talent, the impact is undeniable. Spotify's algorithm is a game changer, offering listeners the chance to stumble upon music they'd likely never encounter otherwise. And it doesn't stop at discovery. The platform extends the opportunity to support these artists directly by purchasing physical albums and merchandise through the app. This is something I deeply appreciate. Spotify is actively, even though they don't pay very much, is actively enhancing its platform to empower artists, enabling them to market their products more effectively and in turn, offering fans a tangible way to support their favorite musicians. Leveraging platforms like Spotify or other you know, music streaming services is a fantastic strategy for unearthing new music, which you can then immortalize by purchasing on CD. At the heart of it all, it's the music that matters, guys. Yet there's a certain irony in using the very technology that overshadowed CDs as a beacon to guide us back to them. It's about reclaiming a piece of music in its physical form, ensuring its permanence in your collection, immune to the whims of digital availability or disappearance. Have you guys been following the recent developments with Sony and the PlayStation 5? They've been pulling games from the PS Plus subscription service, leaving gamers pretty pissed. This scenario underscores a critical point, the transient nature of digital licenses. It's a vivid illustration of why embracing CDs can be such a wise move. With a CD, you're free from the worry that a distant corporate entity might suddenly dictate what you can, what you can or cannot access. It's a stand against the unpredictability of licenses agreements and a nod to the enduring value of owning your own music outright without the shadow of a corporate board's decisions looming over your library. I'm a real collector. I've spent quite a bit of time exploring the collectability aspect of music and media, and I'd like to take that discussion a bit further. Perhaps you've noticed the surge in interest around retro video games over the past few years. They've become the modern equivalent of sports cards for this generation. Companies like WADA and CGC are at the forefront grading the condition of these games, encapsulating them, and turning them into coveted collectibles for gaming enthusiasts. It's fascinating to consider that this trend might pivot towards CDs, potentially elevating the value of rare albums or those in pristine condition still sealed in their original cellophane. I'm fully aware that this veers away from the essence of music itself. After all, once a CD is graded and encased, it's preserved in that state indefinitely. But think about the thrill of owning a rare title like an original Dark Side of the Moon CD from the 80s, still in its wrapper as if you just picked it off the record shop shelf. For those with a collector's spirit, that's an irresistible attraction. There are already a few services tapping into this niche, such as audio media grading and investment grading, with others like CGC expanding into like VHS grading. This movement represents a significant stride towards satisfying two critical desires for hardcore collectors, preservation and investment. Imagine the potential value of a mint condition graded original first release of iconic albums like Thriller or Nevermind in an auction or online marketplace. The prospect is not just exciting for collectors, but it also opens a whole new dimension to the appreciation and valuation of CDs in the digital age. I get it that broaching this subject can stir up strong emotions for many reasons. I faced my fair share of criticism for suggesting that the desirability of CDs could lead to higher prices, especially since part of their charm has been the ability to find them at such reasonable costs in charity shops, flea markets, and even record stores. The concern that encouraging a collectible market for CDs might inflate prices for certain titles is valid. Yet it's crucial to remember that unlike rare video games, you know, many CDs were produced 
in vast quantities. We're not fighting for the sole copy of a legendary game like Game Attack for the Atari 2600 here. Take Thriller by Michael Jackson, for instance, which sold over 100 million copies worldwide. It's entirely feasible to walk into a few local record shops and find multiple copies from various eras without much effort. To argue that my advocacy for collectability will cause the price of all CDs to skyrocket is frankly misguided and short-sighted. My aim is to foster a sense of value and respect for CDs akin to the reverence now held for classic retro video games. I myself have paid $30 for a used copy of Zelda for the Super Nintendo without a bit of regret for the price increase from what it might have been 15 years ago before the wave of nostalgia swept through the gaming community. It's about appreciating the worth of keeping a hobby alive and well. This respect and willingness to invest is precisely what I envision for the future of CDs, ensuring the preservation and enjoyment for generations to come. Greedy bastard. I'm well aware that the landscape is filled with individuals who scoop up CDs solely to flip them for profit. My personal approach to acquiring CDs is deeply rooted in a genuine connection with the music with albums and artists that resonate with me on a level that ensures their place in my listening rotation. Yet I can't dismiss the role of resellers in the ecosystem. Consider a scenario where you've been on the hunt for a specific album for years and a reseller unearths it, unearths it at a charity shop for a mere three bucks, only to offer it to you for 10. Imagine if that copy was amongst the last of its kind in mint condition, teetering on the brink of being recycled. In such cases, despite the markup, resellers serve as a vital conduit, ensuring these cherished items remain in circulation. Yes, the markups can sting, but resellers are, in their way, guardians of availability, keeping the channels open for when you finally locate that elusive CD or video game. The thrill of the hunt, with all its twists and turns, undoubtedly has its charm, but it's important not to vilify resellers outright. They fulfill a function in the broader narrative of music and game preservation. However, the line is drawn at price gouging. That's where my tolerance ends. It's crucial for resellers to align with market values, maintaining fairness in the ecosystem. Platforms like Discogs are invaluable in this regard, offering a framework for buying, selling, and determining the value of CDs, vinyl, cassettes, etc. Establishing a blue book or market value for these items could be a significant step towards mitigating price inflation, ensuring that collectors and enthusiasts can pursue their passions without falling victim to opportunistic pricing. Friends, I truly hope this video has offered you a fresh perspective beyond what I've previously shared about CDs. Sure, we've explored topics like sound quality in the past, and for those discussions, you'll find links to those videos below. My aim and goal today was to approach the subject from a new angle, and I believe we've achieved that. The conversation doesn't end here though. I plan to keep this dialogue alive and kicking on my Patreon page, a place I warmly invite you to join. It's there that I share exclusive after filming commentary along with a peek behind the scenes. Your support on Patreon means the absolute world to me. And as a token of my appreciation, here's a shout out to my patrons. Your backing is invaluable. Thank you each and every one of you for your steadfast support. If you enjoyed the video and got something from it, please go bust in with the like button. Go! Okay, hold him up there, he's gonna move, hold him up, go! Buster makes me feel good. good. Makes me feel good. Subscribe to the channel. We are well on our way to 50,000 subscribers. That's the goal for 2024. Let's do this, friends. And please ring the bell to get notified every time a new video is born. With all that said and done, I will see you on the next one. Take care of yourselves.